muscular tissue. General characteristics. Muscular tissue is one of the four basic tissues of the body, which has the property of contractility. Muscular tissue is mesodermal in origin. It can be classified according either to morphology into two main groups, striated muscles, which show regular pattern of alternating light and dark bands, as in skeletal and cardiac muscles, or non-striated muscles which lack cross striations, as in smooth muscles, or classified according to function into two main groups, voluntary, which is under the control of the will as striated skeletal muscles, or involuntary, which is not under the control of the will as in cardiac and smooth muscles. Skeletal muscle, general feature. Skeletal muscle consists of parallel skeletal muscle fibers arranged in bundles or fascicles and separated by connective tissue septa called the perimysium. The fibers are connected together by connective tissue endomysium while the whole muscle is covered by connective tissue epimysium. The connective tissue, although given different names, is continuous from one part to another and consists of collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers and contains fibroplasts, macrophages, and fat cells. Function of connective tissue. Connective tissue carries blood vessels for nourishment and nerves to the muscles. It aids in integrating and transmitting the force of muscular contraction through binding the muscle units together. Skeletal muscle fibers. General characteristics. Side. Skeletal muscle fibers are present in skeletal muscles, tongue, and pharynx. They are non-branched, except in the face and tongue. Shape and structure. By light microscope, each skeletal muscle fiber is an elongated cell from 10 to 100 micron in diameter and from 1 to 3 cm in length. Its cell membrane is called sarcolemma. Skeletal muscle fiber is cylindrical, multinucleated cell, has up to 100 nucleus peripherally located. The cytoplasm is called sarcoplasm, is acidophilic with clear transverse striations. In adult muscles, there is precursor cells called satellite cells, which act as stem cells to replace damaged muscle cells. These cells are small, spindle-shaped, lying beneath the external lamina of a muscle fiber. By electron microscope, Skeletal muscle fibers are metabolically active, contain organelles, both membranous and non-membranous, and inclusions. Organelles, membranous organelles, there are numerous Golgi bodies. Sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is modification of a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Sarcoplasmic reticulum serves as a store for calcium ion. It is present associated with each myofibril. Mitochondria arranged in rows between the myofibrils. There is negligible amount of rough endoplasmic reticulum. 
non-membranous organelles are well-developed parallel myofibers run the length of the muscle fiber. Each myofibril shows a bending pattern similar to the whole muscle fiber. There is negligible amount of ribosomes as muscle fiber has a low level of protein synthesis. Inclusions. There is abundant myoglobin, which is oxygen binding protein similar to hemoglobin. And there is a large amount of glycogen. Glycogen serves as a storage of energy during muscular contraction. Types of skeletal muscle fibers. Muscle fibers have been classified as red type 1, white type 2, and intermediate. Based on their morphology, histochemistry, and biochemistry, skeletal muscles contain the three types of muscle fibers. However, the white fibers predominate. Except in the diaphragm and the muscles of mastication, which consist mainly of red skeletal muscle fibers. Comparison between red and white fibers. For easy differentiation between both, we have to consider the structure of each. Red fibers or type 1 have abundant sarcoplasm rich in myoglobin, mitochondria, and oxidative enzymes. The cytoplasm shows few myofibrils and irregular striations. The nuclei are central in position. Red fibers, or type 1, have slow, prolonged, infatigable contraction, that is, slow twitch. White fibers, or type 2, on the other hand, have less abundant cytoplasm, or sarcoplasm, poor in myoglobin, mitochondria, and oxidative enzymes, but there are numerous myofibrils and regular striations. The nuclei are peripheral in position. White fibers, or type 2, have a rapid, short, fatigable contraction, that is, fast twitch. Nerve supply. Each skeletal muscle is supplied by one or more nerves, carrying both motor and sensory fibers. Sensory nerve endings may be Simple spiral terminations of non-myelinated nerves around the muscle fibers or muscle spindles, which are specialized terminations known as neuromuscular spindles. Motor nerve endings at a specialized region are called motor end plates or myoneural junctions. Function. Striated skeletal muscle fibers are voluntary in action, under the control of the will. Myofibrils. They are contractile threads, organelles, arranged longitudinally in the sarcoplasm of the muscle fibers. The myofibrils are held together by intermediate filaments composed of protein dismin and vimentin, and each myofibril is surrounded by sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is a modified smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Myofibrils are grouped together in bundles. In transverse sections, these bundles are called Cohenheim areas. Each myofibril consists of longitudinal 
find myofilaments of two types, thick filaments formed of protein myosin. Each filament is one and a half micron long with thickened mid portion and tapering ends. They occupy the central portion of the sarcomere, which is the functional unit of the muscle fiber. Thin filaments formed mainly of actin and regulatory proteins, which are tropomycin and troponin, regulating actin and myosin binding. Each filament is one micron in length. The thin filaments are attached by one end to the Z line, which is the limit of the sarcomere, the functional unit of the muscle fiber. And the thin filaments run parallel and between the thick filaments. The arrangement of thick and thin filaments is responsible for the banding pattern on the myofibrils, alternate dark and light bands. The dark band is formed of two types of filaments, thick and thin, except in the center, which is formed only of the thick filaments. So the center appears pale and is called Henson's zone or H zone, which is further divided by dark membrane M line, formed by cross connections at the midpoints of the thick filaments. The dark band is doubly refractile under polarized light. It is rich in calcium and deeply stained. The light band or eye band is formed of thin filaments, actin filaments only. The light band is divided into two equal portions by a dark membrane, the membrane of Crohn's or Z line, which anchors the actin filaments. The light band is singly refractile under polarized light. It is rich in water and is colorless by ordinary staining methods. The corresponding pans of the adjacent myofibrils are arranged at the same level by a system of intermediate filaments, binding them together and to the cell membrane causing the transverse striations of the muscle fibers. The sarcomere is the distance between two successive Z lines and is the functional unit of the muscle fiber. The I band and the H zone are light because they have only one type of filaments. The I band contains the thin filaments only, actin filaments, while the H zone contains the thick filaments only, myosin filaments. Muscular contraction, the sliding filament theory. During contraction, the muscle fiber becomes shorter and broader, that is, change in size, with less distinct light and dark pains. Shortening of the myofibrils is accompanied by sliding of the filaments on one another. The thin filaments slide to penetrate more deeply into the A band, which remains constant as it is present in the center of the sarcomere. On the other hand, the I band is short in contracted muscle, where it appears narrow and the H zone short, as a result of overlap of both types of filaments, thick and thin filaments, during contraction. In stretched muscles, on the other hand, the I band becomes prominent, while the E band 
remains constant. Triad or tubular system, shape and structure by electron microscope. Triad is present at the junction of E and I bands. The sarcoplasmic reticulum at the junction of E and I bands forms a pair of transverse dilated sarcotubules called terminal system, passed around each myofibril and are continuous with the systemy of adjacent myofibrils. One pair of terminal systemy serves a vein and forms an irregular network over it. The other beer serves I bend in a similar way. The sarcolem sends transverse invaginations into the sarcoplasm, the T tubules that form collars around the myofibrils. The T tubule of one myofibril communicates with those of the adjacent myofibrils to form a complete network across the fiber. The lumen of the T-tubule communicates with the extracellular space at the surface of the sarcolem and does not communicate with the cisterni. The two cisterni of the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the T-tubule in between form the triad tubular system of skeletal muscles. In amphibium, however, it is present at the Z line rather than the AI junction, as in mammals. Function of triad tubular system. It transmits impulses from the exterior of the fiber to all the myofibrils, causing a coordinated response. Passage of electric impulses to sarcoplasmic reticulum results in passive release of calcium ions from the reticulum to contractile elements, which are myofibrils, thick and thin myofilaments, causing these contractile elements to contract. When the impulses end, the sarcoplasmic reticulum actively takes the calcium ions back into the system and the muscle relaxes.